A few years ago, I had an aged English nurse as a patient. After World War II, she had moved to the United States where she did some nursing until she retired. She had fallen in her apartment and broken her hip. The orthopedic surgeon did a fine job of bolting her back together and sent her on to me for rehab. As it happens, the hip fracture was not her first broken bone, so clearly she had osteoporosis. She told me that she had asked the bone doctor how to reverse her osteoporosis and he had responded that she should take three calcium antacids a day. She then launched into a homily with words that only sailors use saying, in effect, everyone knows just taking calcium won't make bone. She's right. Making new bone is a complex and fascinating biochemistry. If you eat salads, vegetables, and fruits, you probably have plenty of calcium already. So let me explain how this works. The goal is to obviously stimulate the DNA of the osteoblast, the bone making cell, to start making bone. This involves a number of chemicals, but for this discussion, let's talk about four of these. Here are the bone making four, vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin K2, and thyroid hormone. Vitamin D is absorbed from our diet and is converted in our skin in response to UV light. It's best known for its regulation of calcium absorption and excretion from our kidneys, so the body now has plenty of calcium to work with. But what few doctors understand is how to get it into the bone. Here's what happens. In the bone, vitamin D stimulates the osteoblast to make a gooey substance called osteocalcin. Then vitamin D combines with the vitamin A, vitamin K2, and ultimately with thyroid hormone to form what's called a heterodimer to stimulate the DNA of the osteoblast to begin pulling calcium into the bone matrix of the gooey osteocalcin to solidify the bone. It takes all of these to make bone. Regeneration of bone cannot happen without adequate D, A, K2, and thyroid. With this foursome, the osteoblast has to make bone. This foursome, especially vitamin K2, stimulates and stabilizes cartilage and increases the amount of lubricating joint fluids. It should work that way, and it does.